Welcome back. Um, there's been a little bit of demand for me to do a beginner short game lesson, which isn't something I get to do very often at all because I generally don't teach beginners. So I've roped in my better half, <laughs> Ailey. This could be an absolute mistake on my part to try and do this yep. um, for my well-being. So <laughs> we're going to treat it like a student. We're going to try and be as nice to each other as we can. And we're going to see how it goes. So just a beginner golf lesson. This is how I would see me teaching somebody chipping if I had to do it. Um, based on a few core principles, a few drills to try and make sure those principles go across. Um, and we'll see how it goes. So don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. Hit the notifications bell. We don't want to miss the new videos. And um, let's get stuck in and see if we can survive. Okay, so chipping for beginners. Um, Ailey shoots balls on range occasionally, maybe a couple of times a year. Uh, I can't say I've ever seen it hit a chip shot. So it's going to be raw. Um, Right, so I will be speaking to you <laughs> and to Ailey as well. And we'll get started. So basic chipping principles, right? Yep. I'll ask you a few questions. Okay. Uh, they're not meant to be condescending or patronizing. All right, you have to have a bit of sense of humor in some of it. But if I asked you what this is for, what would you say? It's in the ball. In the ball, right, exactly. And why is there an angle on it? So that it goes up a bit. So it goes up and yeah, right, good, right. So the club is designed to get the ball airborne for you. Okay. Right, that means that you don't have to try and get the ball airborne. Right. Okay, that would be mistake number one, right, is that players, they see short shots as being elevated, lofted, and their intent becomes, right, let's help the ball in the air. But that's exactly what the club's designed to do. Right, so ultra basic stuff. Um, the other thing about these clubs is they're designed with quite a wide sole. So this is the sole of the club and there's some shape to it. Okay. The shape is there to try and stop the club digging into the ground. Right. All right. We're not going to go any deeper than that into the technology side of it. That's fine. But these clubs are designed not to dig into the ground. Okay. All right. So if the club's not digging into the ground, but it still touches it, yeah. what is it doing with the ground? If it's not digging like this, it's Brushing not missing it. altogether. Brushing it. Okay, good. So I'll let you choose some of your language through this as well, right? So. It's always great to have an external focus or intent. And what I mean by that is not thinking, where are my elbows? Where are my wrists? What's my knee doing? What's my left ear looking like? Mm -hmm. Right. An external focus is something outside of your body. So the club head is a great place to start. And your language, your choice is brush the ground. Yeah. Right. So your intent here is going to be to make sure on every chip shot, no matter what else I'm telling you or asking you to do, that still is your core intent. Okay. Right. You have to brush the ground with the golf club. All right. Deal? Deal. So don't get tied up and lost in anything else I say. All right. If, if you start to just think, right, what is my core intent? Brush the ground. Brush the ground. Perfect. Do I need to help the ball in the air? No. That club's designed to do it, right? Dead easy. Sounds Deal. straightforward. <laughs> so we start with an external focus and an intent on the ground, which is key. And that's going to be referred to throughout the whole session. We need to start to build up though with some kind of foundation. And the foundation here is going to be your setup. So having you stand in a particular way to enable you to execute your brush more effectively. All right, so I'm going to set up and hit a couple just towards that flag. I'm not going to try and reach it. And I'm going to make sure that I do brush the ground. And a little bit of observation maybe from your part on how I'm standing that might be different to what you might expect with a, with a golf swing or a golf shot. Okay, so let's go. Okay, manage my brush, that was all right. Let's go again. Yeah, mine are not going to look like that. Eventually. Right, so observations on how I'm standing to the golf ball. Uh, quite close. Quite close to it, right? So I'm not spaced out yeah. away from the ball. Right? And if I had a driver in my hand, a big club, I would be standing further away. It's longer. We're looking for distance here. We're looking for control, a bit of precision. Right, so getting in close is pretty useful. Okay, yeah. standing close is good. Anything else? Let's see if I compare that to a Iron, I'd be yeah, definitely closer much together. closer together, right? Because I don't need to shift my weight around. Mm. I'm not looking to shift backwards and forwards. Yeah. It's much less dynamic, right? So I've got a nice narrow stance and I'm close to it. Because I'm close to it, the club's also quite a long way up. Plus further away, it get lower and lower and lower, right? I'd bend forward more and more. So I'm quite tall, my stance is narrow, I'm close to it. That's all I'm gonna give you for a second. That's fine. I'm gonna get to stand that away. And then what is your intent? Brush the ground. Brush the ground, perfect. Let's switch over. So I'm, I'm not going to let you pull the trigger until I'm thinking, right, you're standing in a pretty 
good way to get this get this shot hit. Okay, right. I'm just keep hold of the club. I'm just going to push your hands forwards a fraction. So the butt of the club is just on top of the golf ball, maybe even slightly forward of it. It's not yeah. behind it. Okay, so just very small adjustment to set up, just getting that little bit of forward on the grip of the club. Okay, now go for it. Just brush the ground. It doesn't have to be a big, it doesn't have to be a big, big swing at all. It can be small, it can be controlled. It doesn't matter, just brush the ground. <laughs> okay, so question. Did you brush the ground? No. You missed it all together. So no ball for a second. I'm gonna go right here and just make a few swings, relaxed, and try and brush the ground. All right, better. Now, if I said to you, make your backswing a little bit bigger, what would that look like? But the club just a little bit forward to where the ball would be. Good. Slightly bigger backswing. Good. All right, there we go. Now it's looking, you can hear it, right? It's making a yeah. very light brushing sound. Go ahead. All right, good. Now, I'll put a ball in there. I want you to do exactly the same thing. Feet a little bit closer together and brush the ground beneath the golf ball. Did you brush the ground? No. No, right. So we're missing, we're missing something here. <laughs> right, I want you to take one practice swing right inside the ball. Move your feet back as well. That was a little lazy. Move your feet back so you've got a space just like you would stand normally. Bigger backswing. Bigger backswing. Bigger backswing. Huh. All right, go ahead. Into the ball, bigger backswing, brush the ground. Did I do it? I think you did it. <laughs> I mean, it's a long way to the right, but yeah. to be honest, I've not checked our aim. Um, you might well be aiming over there, but question, did the club brush the ground? Uh, slightly. It definitely brushed it, you could hear it, right? Yep. And it probably felt an awful lot better than the shots before. Oh yeah. Right, now I had to bully you a little bit then as a bigger backswing, bigger backswing, bigger backswing. I want to explain why I told her that. Um, when the backswing is very small, you have to try and create a lot of speed to move the ball and that leads to a lot of wrist, hand and arm movement that's well out of control. You make a bigger backswing, it gives you time and space to speed the club up, down to the ground, brush, and go into a follow through. So there shouldn't be any big accelerations. No. If your backswing is very, very small, you'll have to make them. And you, like, without wanting to insult you, you're not coordinated or skilled enough yet, yet, yeah. to do that. Yeah. So you need to give yourself time and space. That's fine. So switch around now. So we, we'll keep, I'll keep, reiterating as well right set up close to it feet close together uh backswing you're starting to learn it needs to be big enough all right it can't just be a tiny backswing big accelerations and that core intent is always brush the ground yeah um i'm gonna hit another couple of shots i just want to pick up on one little little point on the brushing the ground and i want you to tell me how long my club brushes the ground for i mean how much grass is standing up quite a bit quite a bit, right? Probably yeah. this. So my club's brushing that surface for that long. That's a nice big space to hit, right? Yeah. It doesn't have to be super precise. You don't have to be very accurate hitting the golf ball. You just have to get somewhere near it. It can be just before it, that's fine as well. And you can still get an outcome. It popped up more because there was more grass caught between club and ball, slipped up the face. All right, so that brush can actually be about this long. All right, so having that intent, a nice long brush on the ground is gonna help as well. All right, so what's next? Follow through. All right, so I'm not gonna to explain to you how to do everything in the backswing. We're gonna leave that alone for now. Okay. Um, but I am gonna get you to focus on the finish. Yep. Because you have to do certain things well to get through to a good finish position, right? It doesn't happen by accident, you can't fake it. And it's pretty simplistic. So just somewhere to aim for. So we're gonna do the observation thing again. So the same as when I set up, I'm gonna hit a shot, I'm gonna hold my finish. I want you to observe the finish. the finish. Apart from obviously being like statuesque and amazing to look at, <laughs> I want you to. <laughs> Funny that was true. Um, I want you to tell me what you think about how I've moved. Okay. It's actually worst shot of the day, but I will still hold the finish. All right. What do you see? So your hips and your body are twisted round to where you want it. To Good. Go. Right. So I've turned. Yep. Towards the target. All right. So that that that's important. Anything else you see? Back foot. Back foot. What about it? come up. So my heel's actually lifted off the ground. So that's a result of me turning mm -hmm. so much my heel is lifted. I haven't lifted my heel to make me turn. No. It's a result of me turning. All right. So it's not forced. If you turn enough and you're relaxed, the heel will come off the ground. Anything else you can see? 
Uh, the club's up. The club is up? Straight, but not high. It's not high, right? It's not no. up around here. I'm not in a big follow through. It's not low. It's pretty much pointing towards my target. Yeah. Have a, just a quick wander around in front of me. I'm not going to hit, so you're perfectly safe. Where is my club rel relative to my body? Belt. It's at my belt buckle. All right, so I've not dragged it over to the left. It's not pointing this way. The club's pointing at target. The club is in line with my belt or the center of my body. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's just try and simmer that down a bit into something more simple. I've turned the butt of the club or the club is in the middle of my body and I'm facing target. Yeah. All right, so it becomes a little checklist. All right, so every shot you hit, even if it's terrible, you can come back around. You, even if it's terrible, finish, but give yourself a chance to take a look. Like what might I not have done? Yeah. All right, and the thing is, you, as a beginner, you will get into that position and you will still hit some bad shots. Oh yeah. All right, it's gonna happen. All right, so let's put it together. Okay. What's the core intent? Brush. Brush around, don't forget it, because I've just given you a load of info. Yep. Do you thinking, right, oh my God, I've got five things to think about. I've completely forgotten about brushing the ground. So let's go through it step by step. Let's do it in a practice swing first of all then. Okay. So setup wise, feet close together, quite close to the ball, looks good. Butt of the club, just ahead of the ball. Awesome. Yep. Right, make a back swing that's big enough and then go into a follow through. Yeah, all right, now relax oh, a little bit there. That's good, you're okay. All right, so a little bit enthusiastic maybe. Um, the foot has spun out, so everything turned too fast. Arms went past you and up here somewhere. So this is a very much a control part of the game. All right, so it's smooth, it's not forced. You've got plenty of time to hit it. Let's see another one, feet much closer together. Just nice relaxed effort, but the club further forwards, got it. All right, stay where you are with your body. A great turn, foot's much better. Just let your arms come down here. Just too so much you, you're doing too much work with your arms. Okay. All right, so let's just tone the arms down a bit. Body movement, fantastic. Good rotation, heel got lifted up a little bit. Just the arms got a little bit crazy. That's just the attempt to make or create speed. You don't need the speed on this shot. All right, brush the ground. All right, now back swing needs to be a little bigger. So when your swing goes from tiny to big, that's a big acceleration. Yeah. Okay. Good. All right, there we go. All right. So, was it a brush or did it kind of it just it kind of clunked into? There you go. Okay, we're going to use your language, right? So it clunked. It didn't brush. It clunked. Go ahead. <laughs> Want me to hit four this time? Absolutely. Yeah. Feet close together. Okay. Close to it. Now, I think a big key for you is going to be making sure the back swing is big enough. Yeah. So you don't have to try and accelerate hard coming down. You can take your time. So we're looking to connect these things together. Big back swing, brush the ground, some kind of finish. Okay. I'm going to set up a drill and we're going to see if we can step it up a little bit. Right, I've got a drill set up and um, I've got two curved sticks from uh, Perfect Putter called the Swing Arc. So I've put them in the ground. I've left quite a big bit of space in between here for the club to land and brush and then take off again the other side. All right, because uh, a lot of golfers, beginning golfers especially, don't really recognize the circular shape of, of a swing. It applies to every swing, right, but especially short game. Making sure the club continues to curve around you, backswing, downswing and follow through is hugely important to not kind of disrupting the, the smoothness of the motion, getting the center of the club on a golf ball. So it becomes quite a nice external cue. So what I'm gonna have Ailey do is set up with the ball in the center here. I'm gonna have her try and track the stick going back, brush the ground, track the stick going through. All right, we're gonna try and match swing lengths both sides of the golf ball as well as trying to avoid big accelerations. Um, it doesn't matter if it's perfectly on the stick or not, it's just a nice external focus. So again, we're trying not to get stuck in the trap of elbows, hips, shoulders, all that stuff. It'd be nice to kind of blend it together with follow through, making sure that things are rotated. Um, but if it is a very small swing, everything's not gonna rotate through quite as fully. Anyway, I mean, if I were to stop at the top of the stick, I'm not gonna be fully facing target. No, it's just not gonna happen. The swing would have to be bigger, was to parallel to the ground with the club to get it actually facing the target. So we can be smaller if needed. Uh, the follow through still stays as feedback though. All right, so when the shot is hit poorly, the club positioning, the body positioning, we can start to dig into it a little bit to try and correct on the next shot. But for now, we're going super simple. 
trace the sticks, brush the ground, gentle, <laughs> sense of rhythm. So let's switch over. Should we have a couple, yeah, we'll have a couple without a ball first. So I was gonna keep reinforcing set up, feet close together, you're not too far from it. Good angles there, that's better, better with the position of the club. So trace the stick and brush the ground with, with rhythm, right? And there's a bit of tempo to it. There's no big jump, no force. I'm counting in my head. So counting for rhythm, right, and tempo. Yeah. Keep control over that, good. I've got a question. Okay. Scale of one to 10, how tight are you holding that thing? Really tight. Okay, can you make it a five? Yeah, I can try. Okay, can you do some practice swings? And it's gonna be five when you begin. All right. All right, make a backswing and stop. It's still gonna be five here. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be five as you come down. At no point you're gonna go 10. I think that's what I'm doing. Well, yeah, because you're over accelerating. Like we, we know that, right? That you're trying to counting. It's not doing quite enough of a job. Let's go grip pressure, keeping it relaxed the whole way through. So there is, there is some freedom in the hands and the wrists. And you'll probably find it easy to get the club on the ground. Okay, that swing's getting pretty enormous on the follow through there again. All right, good. And again. Right, same as that, same rhythm. Yep. No ball. Okay. It might come in at some point. But the, the, the key takeaway there is up here, when you change direction, we can't go, go 10. Yeah. You can't go super tight with your hands. That just shows you're accelerating way too hard, trying to force the club to the golf ball. Okay. You gotta be almost lazy, relaxed, no big effort. That was nice. Good. So lazy, relaxed, no big effort. Didn't even put the ball in. You thought it was coming, panicked. All yeah, right, very nice. That was better. That was better, right? Do not miss the ground again. You've got no excuse to miss the ground. I know. I mean, because that, that's your sole focus. All this other stuff around it, that's just packaging, right? To make the job easier, in theory. <laughs> but your focus still becomes brush the ground. Okay. Nice, there we go. And the follow through. There we go. It's not, honestly, uh, it's... Um, it is hard. It is, as, as a beginner, it's not easy. Um, it's very easy to get distracted with external inputs like, oh, I've got these sticks, so oh, let's make sure my rhythm's not gone and you can kind of get lost really quickly. But that's why when I introduced it, I made sure that the core focus was Brush always it. gonna be brushing the ground. But you, you, could, you could not do this well. Um, you could have a rhythm that's terrible. You could do all kinds of things. You stand really badly, and if you still brush the ground on the golf ball, the outcome's gonna be okay. Okay. All right, that's not permission to do all those things <laughs> terribly, but it's just to point out that your, your awareness of where this is, yeah. where it's gonna hit, how it's gonna hit the ground, it's always gonna override everything else. Okay. Okay, so that, that, I can't emphasize enough how important that intent and focus is. Doesn't guarantee everything, but if you get good at it, you can do a lot of stuff wrong and get away with it. No ground. I mean, it was an okay shot. It's going in the best direction. Yeah, it's, de it's definitely improving, but it wasn't so much of a brush. And out of the two, right, and this, this is probably going to baffle you a little bit. I take that over the shot before. 
The shot before has finished close to the hole, but I'm not worried about close to the hole because it didn't satisfy fundamental brush the ground. That one did, the brush is a bit heavy, but we can deal with that, all right? Okay. You, you do that on the golf course, yeah, you've just not made it far enough. Yeah. You hit the ball too far up, so too far up here on the golf course, and it, if that had been a fraction higher on a real green, that is gone. All right, and it's, it could be in deep trouble. So I'd always take you know, the slightly heavier brush versus the light. I'm just gonna flatten these sticks off and get them out of the way because that turf's starting to get a bit worn out. So we're gonna take the stabilizers off for a second. Okay. Uh, the focus remains the same. Yep. Setup looks great. Brush in the ground. All right, it's a decent shot again. We, I you, tickled the grass. You, <laughs> <laughs> it was a tickle. Tickled the grass, okay. <laughs> All right, can you just tickle it a little bit more? <laughs> I can try. Okay. There we go. All right, we will finish on that one. <laughs> All right, so a uh, bit of a journey. Some of it will have been edited out <laughs> for your benefit. Um, just, it's just really fascinating to watch the process of a, as a beginner, the, the things that almost become roadblocks to doing it well. Uh, and uh, I think that uh, it's gonna sound repetitive, but missing that kind of core focus means you can get lost because you start to expect a lot of technical know-how and, and input to do the job for you. Um, when ultimately it still comes down to your ability to deliver this to the ground. Everything else is just to make life a little bit easier. So uh, thanks, that was, it was progress. It was slightly slow progress, but it, what, what can you do? Beginner golfer, right? It's gonna be the same for all of you. Um, if you're not a beginner golfer, hopefully you're still able to take something from it that's gonna help your short game. So thanks for watching. Thank you very much for being my victim, I mean volunteer. Uh, maybe you'll see her again and we'll do bunkers or something when she's practiced this a little bit.